Okay, we just finished our midterm self self assessment. We finished our midterm critique. We finished our midterm exam. Now we get to start making our own creative work. And we're going to start with assignment seven, which if you look at assignment sheets, is a spot illustration, a full color spot illustration project. So if we look at that assignment sheet, it basically says we need something that is self-contained, isn't cropped on any one side. That's the definition of a spot illustration. So it can freely float within a page of text. It can freely float on a t-shirt. And what we need is that uh, we need to start with line work. And we're going to work between Illustrator to create vector line work and Photoshop. We're going to color behind that vector line work in Photoshop. So the details are here. You want to start with thumbnail sketching. Don't just go with your very first idea. And then we're going to be putting uh, each design onto a Redbubble page, kind of like this. This is a past student example, so that we can see how flexible that spot illustration is, how it can work as a sticker of various sizes, how it can work as a t-shirt, um, and you know, all these different things that are possible. So when we look at the past student examples, or we look at my instructor examples, this is an example of a finished spot illustration. And you might say, well, I don't see outline, right? Well, I don't see black outline, but there's definitely outline. There's definitely line work. So your spot illustration is not a painting. It is something that has line work and then coloring behind the line work. We'll get to painting soon. But in this case, the line work got changed to white, you know, for the finished design. So those are options we'll have. Those are called color holds. It all starts with a sketch. You can even just sketch it with ink, and then we can scan your ink and convert that into vectors, right? But you will be posting your vector line work. Then we'll be coloring behind the vector line work. And you see how the little ring here is glowing? That's called a color hold. So it's colored behind the black line work, but then also on top of the black line work to glow. There's a sketch. There's the illustration. Not so line-based, right? Here's the line-based. There's the flat color. There's the, the duotone soft edge color. There's a the t-shirt design on and on and on. So this is a pretty straightforward one. This is Vladimir Putin kind of as He-Man um, stepping on a Ritz cracker. So it's Putin on the Ritz. Can't go wrong with wordplay, right? So you do a sketch and then you can get your line work in a variety of ways, but you want it to be a vector, really clean. So one way is you can just ink it, scan the ink, and then live trace it. You can try to uh, paint over it and digitally ink in Photoshop and then live trace that as a vector, or we'll learn just how to continue to use Illustrator to create uh, clean shapes that we like. But let's look at the coloring here, because another thing we're going to learn with this project is not just flat coloring and duotone coloring and full spectrum coloring in Photoshop. We're also going to learn about printing color and what's called a halftone separation. So you can see the little process CMYK dots here that are overlaid with the printing. And where they get darkest, they create little circles. That's part of what we're going to learn today as well. Because spot illustration is so frequently used for mass reproduction, right? So you need to understand not just fine art printing, but mass produced printing on a four color lithograph press, which is what this is imitating. And then once you have that design, you can do various things with it, right? And notice the line work here got changed to a brown. I don't know why they're going out of order now. <laughs> All right, so this is one I did last semester. That's not it. Anyway, on and on, lots of examples. Always starts with a sketch. Um, I don't usually show my rejected thumbnail sketches, but you can definitely have rejected ones. Like I have them. I draw things that I don't like. So I wanted, this was when Pokemon Go was really popular. So I wanted to do a, a, a version of our campus mascot, Nico the Nighthawk, as kind of a Pokemon. And so I did that one, but it's a little too 
on the nose, so I want to make it a little chibier, a little bit cuter. And so that was the sketch I went with. Then I did the vector outline, and then I did the coloring, and then it's a spot illustration. As simple as that. That works in a variety of ways. Now this is just a very different type of inking, right? So you can play with different approaches to it. I think this is a little bit more along the line of what I'm going to do this time. But for this example, I inked it by hand. I sketched it with all the shadows involved, inked it by hand, and then scanned it, turned it into a vector, a uh, did duotone coloring behind it, on and on and on. This was last semester. I inked it by hand, scanned it, demonstrated a small portion of it inking in Illustrator, but there's a lot of detail. And then, you know, played with it. We're going to add text to these later. This is one that I inked only in Illustrator, and it gives you a slightly cleaner outline, right? But ultimately, however you get there is good. As long as we have something that is um, a spot illustration that's fully contained, and you have clean outlines that we can color behind, we're good. And we can make that work. Okay, so how can we get started? Well, you first want to brainstorm and kind of get your idea. So I threw out the idea of sleep, and then this was the sketch I did after a few modifications. And so this is what I'm going to be illustrating. And I call this night hair, and it's a combination of a night hawk. This is an old uh, public domain, you know, lapsed copyright, naturalist depiction of a night hawk. That was actually flipped the other way and a little bit longer for some reason, so I squeezed it. And I used that as kind of reference to do my drawing. I'm going to make it a little bit bumpier and more expressionistic. And then I'm also going to reference kind of photos of Nighthawks, which are kind of not the most interesting in terms of color palette, but have really cool textures on them. And I'm thinking that this is going to be a pretty heavily inked, pretty heavy line work illustration of the bird, pretty dark because there's so many feathers, so many details. And then I wanted to pair that with a rabbit. I don't know if I was thinking of, of Easter coming up or what, but I like rabbits. I raised rabbits as a kid. So that's the hare and that's the night, right? So night hare, it's like nightmare and on a dark background, it can be about sleep. Why not? Free association, right? Remember, it's like the balloon, you want to hold it loosely. <laughs> you just got to play with it. So find a way to stay engaged. And this might be kind of the lighter aspect, so not inked as heavily, which will allow more color to come into it. So I've got my pencil sketch. Where do I go from here? I could just take a piece of tracing paper, use an ink pen, ink over the top of it. You're allowed to do that. Then I can scan the ink and then live trace it. But I'm going to show you the options for creating line work in Illustrator. It's the cleanest way to do what's called digital inking. So I'm just going to go ahead and right away open up my sketch, even if it was just a screen grab, right? Uh, I could just do it in Illustrator and start, but wouldn't it be smart because we're talking about digital art here. What are the advantages of digital art? Well, you can make little modifications, right? So even though I like my sketch, I can make a duplicate of it in Photoshop, and then I can play with warping it. I may be getting a little bit more out of these shapes, because I want them to read a little bit like a yin-yang, a balance. And then I want to ask myself, OK, is there anything in the design I'm not so happy with? And that back foot just kind of sits wrong. Even though it's referenced off of this uh, James Abaddon you know, lapsed copyright image that foot back there but in his that looks kind of wrong too so let me see i don't have a rabbit in front of me you can't find a whole lot of great photo reference of rabbits because they're skittish and hard to photograph but because i know compositing what i can do is duplicate that foot and play with some slightly different positions right because it usually doesn't take a whole lot to improve something once you have it so I can try warping it. And because uh, spot illustrations are so much about their overall shape and silhouette, 
you know, not too different than, than your creature designs we were doing earlier. Right? I want to look at these negative shapes too that are made between the two because that's going to matter a lot to a t-shirt that it might go on or to a poster we might do later. And we're going to be adding text to this as well. So I want to make sure the shape is as strong as it can be. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I think that works. And you just want it to you just want to be able to play with it and kind of improve it at each step. All right, then I'm going to clone stamp to erase on the layer behind. Let's see. And merge those together just for the time being and see do I like this better or do I like this better? And I think I want to keep this strong line here. Duplicate that, move it above. That's why we do compositing first so we have all these skills. All right. And I think I like that better. So that's what I'm going to go with. So this will be the sketch I bring in to Illustrator. Notice this is not going to live trace well. It's lots of loose gray marks. There's the texture of the paper. It doesn't make a lot of sense to try to clean this up a whole lot before I bring it into Illustrator. Um, I just need to see everything clearly, and I can. But if I wanted to, I can merge it all together, flatten the image, and I can do things like auto tone and let it get darker. Right? And maybe that helps a little bit. Let's see if I still like it. But I don't need to worry about it being really clean or erased or ready to live trace because I am going to be tracing over it in Illustrator. So I'm going to save that to my desktop. It's my Assignment 7 sketch. And it's always good to put your name in your file. to the desktop, and now I'm going to open that up in Illustrator and just set it up. And then I'll show you a variety of, of digital inking techniques. So how do I set it up? Well, I'm going to put all my reference over here in this folder and just kind of keep it tucked down to the side, maybe minimize it. And I'm going to open up this thing off of the desktop that I just saved. And I'm going to open it with Illustrator. And because it's a raster file made of pixels, it will want me to live trace it. And I'll show you why that's a mistake. <laughs> so you don't waste your time trying to live trace something that's not going to do a good job live tracing. So if you want to live trace something and turn it into a vector in Illustrator, you have to make sure it's clean. And you can do that by either inking on a piece of tracing paper and scanning that. Ink's a whole lot cleaner than pencil because it's a puddle. Or you can even try you know, tracing over it in Photoshop and making it clean that way. But the technique I'm going to use is just bring it in as a guiding sketch in Illustrator and then use the blob brush tool to paint uh, new shapes as outlines that are pressure sensitive right over the top of it. And Illustrator is taking forever to open. I'm not sure why. So I'm going to try to just open it directly. And then I also have gathered some other inspiration. Um, I have past spot illustrations, like recent illustrations I've done that I want to be kind of inspirations. So this is one. You can see the, the dark line work of all these flowers as a vector. And then the, the color that's kind of soft edge duotone color, but then broken up with the uh, process dots of CMYK printing. And I like that effect. And 
and we will open in Illustrator.